Thank you for tuning into another video from JRM Recaps. Spoilers ahead. The pianist sets off in Warsaw, Poland in September, 1939, at the beginning stages of the Second World War, first presenting Vladislav Ladek Spilman, who works as a piano musician for the neighborhood radio. The Polish armed forces has been crushed in three weeks by the German armed forces and Spillman's radio broadcast is blasted with bombs while he plays live on the air. While emptying the structure he finds a companion of his who has him meet his sister, Dorota. Spillman is quickly very drawn to her. Vladislav gets back to track down his folks, his two sisters and his brother, pressing to leave Poland. The family examines the chance of escaping Poland effectively, which is highly unlikely, and they choose to remain. That evening, they pay attention to the BBC radio broadcast and hear that England and France have proclaimed war on Germany. The family celebrates, accepting the war will end rapidly once the Allies, Great Britain, the United States, the Soviet Union, can bring the fight to Germany. Conditions for Jews in Warsaw rapidly fall apart. Ladek meets with Dorota, who goes with him around Warsaw to learn of the wrongdoing Jewish individuals have come upon under the new Nazi authority. Businesses that were once welcoming to them currently will not permit them on their premises. Ladek's dad knows he is not allowed to stroll on any of the streets during these times. However, he walks in the city right by two German officials, when he starts to protest, one of the officials punches him in the face. Not too long later the family needs to move to the Jewish ghetto laid out by Nazi rule. The Holocaust is beginning, and the family, however wealthy before the conflict, is diminished to the ground level, despite the fact that they are still in a better situation than many of their fellow Jews in the pact, starving, and sickness-ridden ghetto. Vladislav takes some work playing piano at a cafe in the ghetto, striking down a proposal from a family companion to work for the Jewish police, and the family makes do, however day-to-day -day environments in the ghetto proceed to deteriorate and many of Jews pass away every day from sickness, starvation, and horrible demonstrations of brutality by German soldiers. One night the family sees the SS walk into a house across the road and capture a family. The oldest man cannot stand up when requested since he is restricted to a wheelchair and the SS officials toss him over the patio to his death. The other relatives are gunned down in the road and run over by the SS truck on the off chance that they were still alive. By 1942, the matured dad needs to apply for working papers through a companion of Ladex, with the goal that he can take some work in a German clothier. However, the day comes when the family is chosen to be sent to their demises at the Treblinka concentration camp. Helena and Henrik are chosen and removed and the remainder of the family is shipped off the Umschlagplatz to stand by for transport. They all rejoin later on. As the family sits under the blazing sun with many different Jews standing by for the trains, the dad utilizes the family's last 20 zlotys to purchase a suite from a kid, who evidently doesn't know about his own looming death. Every relative eats a little piece of sweets, their last meal together. As they are moving towards the trains, Vladislav is out of nowhere yanked from the lines by Itzhak Heller, a Jewish man functioning as a police guard. Vladislav watches the remainder of his family board the train, gone forever. He stows away for a couple of days in the cafe he played piano and along with his old manager there. He later mixes in with the 10% or so of the Jews that the Nazis kept alive in the ghetto to use for slave work, destroying the brick dividers isolating the ghetto and reconstructing condos for new, non-Jewish occupants. He is given something to do, under a difficult and harsh environment, reconstructing a building destroyed by bombs. He assumes he sees a close buddy Janina Godluska, a vocalist, however she passes by very quickly. He discovers that a portion of the Jews are arranging an uprising, and helps them by carrying firearms into the ghetto. While conveying blocks, he drops a heap of them, is violently whipped by a SS official and is given a new position providing the laborers with building supplies. He likewise pirates firearms and potato sacks filled with beans. The weapons will be given to the opposition fighters on the other side of the wall for the uprising. At a certain point, he is nearly caught by a German official, who thinks that Ladek is concealing something in a sack of beans. After being nearly caught, he determines he should get away and take his risks in the bigger city. With the assistance of companion, 
Majorek, who got his dad working papers a couple of years prior, he escapes and tracks down Janina and her husband. They take Vladislav to his caregiver Gebczynski, a man fighting with the Polish defiance, who conceals him for one evening. The following day Gebczynski takes him to an empty condo close to the ghetto wall, where he can reside forever on food that has been smuggled in. But he needs to be quiet since a few non-Jews also live in the structure and think the loft is unoccupied. There, Ladek observes a piece of the Jewish ghetto uprising of April through May 1943, for which he carried the weapons. He continues to watch for weeks after as the uprising is at long last squashed and its members killed. Afterward, Gebczynski needs to move Ladek as the Nazis have tracked down the weapons of the Polish resistance, constraining Gebczynski to be on the run too. Gebczynski says it's inevitable before the Nazis find the condo Ladek is stowing away in. Ladek chooses to wait, feeling more secure where he is. His companion gives him a location to go to in the event of a crisis, and leaves, seriously cautioning Ladek not to be found alive by the Nazis. Vladislav stays in the condo a couple of additional months until he has a mishap, breaking a few dishes. The commotion has ruined his disguise, and he needs to hurry out of the structure, being pursued by an irate German lady who associates him with being Jewish. Ladek goes to the address he was given in case of a crisis, where he shockingly meets Dorita, who is presently hitched, pregnant, and her brother dead. Dorita and her husband conceal Ladek in another empty condo, where there is a piano that his need for quietness holds him back from playing. His new guardian, Shalas, is extremely casual about sneaking in food, and Vladislav again faces starvation, and at one point nearly passes on from jaundice. Dorita and her husband visit him, seeing that he is seriously sick. They report that Shalas had been gathering cash from unselfish and oblivious donors and had stashed everything, abandoning Ladek to pass away all by himself. Ladek recuperates so as to see the bigger 1944 Warsaw resistance, in which the Polish people attempted to retake control of their city. Before long the Germans begin going after the structure and he needs to escape. The Poles had anticipated that the Soviet Red Armed Force would have advanced by now and should help them, however the Russians did not come. To the contrary, making it so the Germans could put an end to the uprising and drive the whole leftover populace of Warsaw out of the city. Vladislav stashes himself in the neglected medical clinic that had been across the road from his last hideaway. The Germans had by then chosen to consume Warsaw to the ground, so Vladislav escapes the clinic and hops back over the wall into the ghetto, presently a neglected, barren no man's land of blocks and rubble. He remains there, scavenging through worn-out structures to track down something to eat, and keeps on concealing himself from everyone, until one night a Nazi official, Commander Wilm Hosenfeld, uncovers him. To demonstrate to Hosenfeld that he is a musician, he plays a short and somber version of Chopin's Ballade in G minor, the first time he first has played piano since he worked in the Jewish ghetto years prior. Hosenfeld, touched by Spillman's playing, assists him with staying alive, permitting him to keep concealing in the loft even after the house has become the captain's central command. Hosenfeld in the long run leaves the house with his staff when the Russian armed force moves nearer to Warsaw. Hosenfeld provides Ladek with a last package of food and his jacket. He asks Ladek his last name, which sounds precisely like Spielmann, the German word for piano musician. Hosenfeld vows to tune in for Ladek on the radio. Hosenfeld likewise lets him know that he just has to get by for a couple of additional days, the Russian armed forces will free Warsaw soon. Not long after, Vladislav sees Polish supporters, and, full with joy, goes outside to meet his compatriots. Seeing his jacket given to him by Hosenfeld, they think he is a German and attempt to kill him, before he can persuade them he is indeed Polish. In the spring, recently liberated Polish people stroll past a Russian prisoner of war camp, and Hosenfeld is among the detainees. The Poles mercilessly shout at the Germans through the wall, yet when Hosenfeld hears that one of the Poles is a performer, he goes to the fence and lets him know that he helped Vladislav, and requests that he asks Vladislav to return the favor, before a Russian soldier tosses him back to the floor. The Polish performer actually does take Vladislav back to the site to request his release of the Russians, however they have withdrawn without any evidence of them ever being there by the time he arrives. 
Vladislav can't help Hosenfeld, however he gets back to playing piano for the radio broadcast. The closing scenes let us know that Hosenfeld passed on in a Soviet gulag in 1952. Vladislav lived to be an elderly person, finally passing away in Poland in the year 2000 at 88 years old. The scenes are overlapped with film of Ladek in concert victoriously playing Chopin's Grand Polonaise Brillante alongside a full orchestra. Thank you for watching our recap. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for future videos. Also, try some of our other videos displayed on screen.